daily product sales report with spilled arrays. Here's our small data set. And right here, date and product. That is a unique combination of all the different elements from the two columns. And then the sales number. We want to be able to simply copy, paste our new data, and instantly our report updates. Now, I've done other videos about reporting with spilled arrays, but in this video, we'll see a couple of new tricks that are really quite cool. Now, the first trick here is from these two columns, we need to get a unique list of all the dates and products. Well, of course, the new Microsoft 365 function we use is unique. Now, this is an Excel table, and I want you to notice we're going to highlight these two columns. I see my downward pointing black arrow. I click and drag. And notice that the table formula nomenclature creates a locked range. And the way you create a locked range with this syntax is you have in square brackets the two field names inside of square brackets with a colon. Now, that's all I need to do, close parentheses, and when I enter, the unique list of all the combinations spill. Now, the problem with this is, is I actually want the dates to be sorted, and then within the dates, I want product sorted. So really, what we needed to use is sort by. Now, this is an amazing function. We'll highlight the same two columns. There it is, the array comma, and then listing one by one the columns we want to sort. So the major sort, that's going to be date. Uh-oh, when I highlight a single column, it doesn't lock it. And although the formula for the time being is going to spill, and that will work, later we're going to have to take this formula and copy it. And that means this table formula nomenclature, if it's not locked with the colon and the extra square brackets, it'll move relatively, meaning date will move to product. Now, the problem with manually doing this is we have to type it out. And I have painfully done this in many other videos. But watch this. Here is a great trick. I'm going to trick it. I'm just going to go like that. It's got the wrong range, but it has the right colon and extra square brackets. So now I'm simply going to change that to date. Really what we need is for Microsoft to give us like the F4 key to lock it. Now we have the first column to sort. We have to decide the order. We're putting one sort ascending, comma. Now the second column, we're going to do the same trick. But now we're going to highlight date. Product, I can see it, so I hit Tab. Now, comma, the sort order, we're going to say 1. Close parentheses. This will not give us a unique list, but sure enough, we can see it is sorted in the correct order. Now we simply put unique around the outside. And there we go. That is beautiful. Date sorted, and then within date, we have our sort for our product. And when we add new products later, they will be sorted correctly. Now, here's the problem. We have a single cell spilled array. And sure enough, in the other surrounding cells, it's grayed out. That means the formula doesn't live there. It only lives there. And watch this. We're going to need both of these spilled arrays inside of the SUMIFS formula. And if, for example, I highlight this one, uh-oh, that's not going to work. I don't see the pound because there is only one formula. So if I use a pound, it refers to everything. And that will not work inside of some ifs. So we're going to have to get tricky here and treat this as a lookup table where we're going to look up the first column, then the second column. So after the equal sign, I'm using the great index lookup function. There it is, a full two-way table. Come to the end, comma. We want all the rows, so we leave it omitted or put a 0. And what do we want? We want a column number 1 and then column number 2. So we use inside our formula the number incrementer columns. Now we're sitting in F3. So dollar sign $F3 colon F3, close parentheses. That's an expandable range as I copy it to the side. The second F will be allowed to move to G. Columns counts, F to F is 1, F to G is 2. So that's our formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter. You can see it looked up just the first column. And now we have our second column. And now, properly, when I highlight that, it's a spilled array so it knows. Same with this one. Now we can use sum ifs. The sum range, 
the sales column. And we don't need to worry about locking it because we're not copying it. It will just spill automatically, comma. Criteria range 1, we're going to highlight date, comma. Criteria, well, this is the era of spilled arrays, so I simply highlight all of them. And that instructs some ifs to make a calculation for each one of those. And because it's got the pound, later when this expands, some ifs will know to expand, comma. Now we highlight the product column, and then our spilled arrays for products. And that's our formula, Enter. Now, because we're using spilled arrays and it can expand and contract, we have to use conditional formatting to format. So I'm going to highlight as many rows as we think will be used. Home ribbon tab, conditional formatting, new rule, or the keyboard, Alt-HLN. I can click on Use a Formula to determine which cells to format, or I can use the Page Down key. I can click in Format Values where this formula is true, or hit Tab. Now we want to very carefully select the active cell, that light color cell. The default is absolute, so I hit the F4 key one, two, three times. And I say, hey, relative cell reference, are you not empty? Now technically, that's a zero length text string. But that logical construction checks to see if the cell is empty or it's a zero length text string. If it's not empty, then I'm going to add borders, outline, fill, some color. Click OK, click OK, click OK. Now I already pre-formatted this with date number formatting. I'm going to do the same over here for currency with zero decimals. And that is our amazing spilled array report. When I come over here and copy this and paste it below, instantly our report updates. There it is, the first column sorted. Within that sort, we have product. And there are our totals. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out more videos about spilled array reports, check out these videos.